just, just ask the question. It's fine. Whatever you write is legitimate. I'm not going to like try to debunk. Just tell me what it said and ask the question. Yeah. It's your words here. Uh, no, okay, but like, just ask, let's just get to your question. Candace Owens destroys not one, not two, and not even three, but four leftist clowns in a Q&A at a university. Guys, I'm not kidding about the clown part, by the way. They're literally clowns. And I mean that in every sense of the word, how they act, how they looked. You'll see what I mean, okay? So we're gonna get right into this video, guys. It's gonna be a fun one. But first, everybody, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the Resist the Mainstream YouTube channel. I'm your host, Darian, and if you subscribe, guess what? It means more videos for you guys, so it's a win-win, okay? So, let's get into the video. Guys, you, the, uh, to the people that are dressed up as clowns, you guys can literally come to the front. I'm just gonna let them go first, just because I promised them, and then... I wasn't kidding about the clowns. Alright. Thank you. Alright, listen, I have to hold the mic, okay? Okay. Okay. Hi. Okay. Who's going first? Is there still a mask policy here? Hi. Hop, pardon? I just want to make sure I can hear you. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Okay. So you like to learn, right? Um, what did you learn from the Christchurch mosque shooting where 51 people died at the hands of someone who is influenced by you above all other people? How did you change your rhetoric after this person shot 51 people? Great question. Um, so what she is referencing, one of the craziest media firestorms I've ever been in in my life, um, in New Zealand is what she's talking about. There was a mosque shooting, and at 51, I'll take your number for it, people lost their lives. And apparently, and I actually haven't followed up on the story because I've never been to New Zealand. I don't talk about mosques. I don't talk about Muslims. So it would be very weird if this would have anything to do with me. But apparently they said that there was a online manifesto. I don't even know if that was officially attributed or if that was just early, early press. But they found a manifesto of the shooter online somewhere. Again, this was alleged early. I don't know if they've since debunked that. And apparently the person listed Nelson Mandela as his number one inspiration alongside Spyro the Dragon, which I believe is a child's cartoon, Spyro the Dragon, maybe it's a video game, I don't know, and uh, Candace Owens. Yeah, you know, I didn't feel like there was a lesson other than people are crazy and we shouldn't give credence to homicidal maniacs when they're putting together cartoons and people that fought against apartheid plus a random American in their thought process. So I learned that that was clearly an ill person and that any person who believed or gave credence to a manifesto should probably re-examine why that is. That's what I learned. Thank you very much for your question. Boom. Next. Knockout. This next person. So we have a long line. Before that girl starts, cue that Maxine Water clip where Maxine Waters, the longtime LA congressman, was literally talking about having Trump administration officials be harassed by her leftist supporters. Do you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station? You get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome. That girl has no problems with an actual left winger calling for violence against people with a certain view. But Candace, she needs to watch her rhetoric, none of which calls for violence, by the way, unlike left-wingers like Maxine Waters. She needs to adjust her rhetoric because some frickin' kook put her in a manifesto in New Zealand. Somebody help me, just make it make sense. Ugh. I actually have here, I was talking to someone outside. Mm -hmm. It was like one of your merch people, I don't know. Sorry, could you just be clear? It's a little hard. Um, I was talking to, ooh, my God. That's good, no, that's good. I was talking to one of your merch people or like something outside. And I mentioned that, um, I don't know if you know this about Pittsburgh, it's a very Jewish population. It's awesome. We have great food. Pittsburgh. Great. great. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, um, I don't know if he knows about our school. Yeah, very Jewish. Great. Um, so I asked him, I was like, are you sure you want to bring Candace Owens in here? Because if I remembered correctly, and in my, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I might have forgotten. I was like, you did say something about Hitler once that was weird. And he said, do you have a source? And I was like, hold on. So I got a source. Mm -hmm. I showed it to him. He was like, that's the hill. It's a, like a tabloid. I was like, okay, that's fair. I looked it up. Um, my first question is, do you trust Newsweek.com? Do I trust 
newsweek.com. Oh, you, just, you can just get to your question. Let's just pretend that whatever you read was legitimate and just ask the question. For real. Um, I can actually play your response. Uh, just, but just ask the question. It's fine. Well, whatever you read is legitimate. I'm not going to like try to debunk. Just tell me what it said and ask the question. I know. Yeah. God. It's your words here. Uh, no, okay, but like, just ask, let's just get to your question. Fine. Uh, God. Uh, this girl's, I'm pretty sure this girl's in her 20s. She sounds like, I don't know, like the most insufferable 14 year old, 13 year old girl ever. We have some maturing to do as a generation. And it's not funny. I know I'm laughing, guys, but it's not funny, okay? It, it, I mean, it's funny because it's so absurd, but it's also, it's an existential crisis, okay, guys? So let's get it under handle. Please, please, I beg you guys. Preamble. I actually don't have any problems at all with the word nationalism. Okay. I think that the definition gets poisoned by elitists that actually want globalism. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seems a lot like, you know. Globalism is what I don't want. Whenever we say nationalism, seems a lot like, you know, think about at least in America is Hitler. Okay, you could stop there, but it's okay <laughs> if Hitler just wanted to make America great and have, uh, oh my God. Oh, that was a really funny thing. Can you just, can you just get to your question? Right, ask, ask yeah, do you have a question? Is it, yeah, it kind of feels like a filibuster. <laughs> okay, if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, mm -hmm. it says here, adding that he would be problematic if he, quote, had dreams outside of Germany. Then the political commentator said that Hitler wanted to globalize and said she doesn't really have an issue with nationalism. He was okay. a national socialist, but if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. Okay. The problem Which is that he wanted, he had dreams outside Germany. Okay. He wanted to globalize. Do you have a question? What's your question? My question is, do you stand by that? What did she say? Do you stand by that? Okay, thank you. I'm so glad we got there. It's <laughs> <laughs> <Just> amazing. <laughs> Okay, so everybody has seen this, and actually, I'm sure a lot of you watched my episode yesterday, so her timing is definitely great, where I had a rabbi on who brought this up. Canlis said Hitler was okay. You probably have seen the viral clip of me in Congress, where a congressman tried to say Canlis said Hitler was okay, and that is definitively not what happened. Actually, I was speaking on stage alongside Charlie Kirk. Uh, rather, ironically, there was a room filled with Jewish people, including a Jewish journalist who interviewed me that night, and when I said whatever I said on stage, nobody cared. That was in November 2018. And then four months after that in 2019, some journalists pulled out the clip out of t context and tried to make it seem like I was saying Hitler was okay. So let me tell you what actually happened on that night. Uh, a person rose their hand in the audience after we gave a speech about, and obviously this is during the MAGA years, about this, you know, need to return to having an identity, you know, a national identity. And a woman asked the question, you know, would you say that you're a nationalist? Because I feel like people are sort of afraid to embrace that term. And so I answered her and I said, I don't have a problem with the word nationalism. Actually, I think a lot of the times the reason why nationalism, the idea of caring about having like your, your nation's identity and fighting for policies that are pretty much America first, uh, gets poisoned because people wrongly attribute nationalism to Adolf Hitler. It's not like he was just some guy that was in Germany saying, oh, I just want to make Germany great. And then I went on to say, obviously, he invaded Poland. He had globalist ambitions. Like, none of this was okay. That was the end of it. <laughs> but, of course, when you pull it out of context and you're a journalist who's trying to smear someone, you try to make it seem like the person, I didn't even mention the word Jews. I mean, there's no there's nothing like, question about whether we were talking about Jewish people, the Holocaust, nothing. We were simply talking about the word nationalism and why people have hesitancy when they say that they are a nationalist or when they say that they're America first or whatever. So that was it. That was the end of it. There was there was no talk about saying Hitler was okay or this was great. It was just a topic about whether or not nationalism is rightly attributed or, or, or whether or not it is a dirty word. So I hope that provides some clarity for you. Nope, nope. Your question was like 20 minutes. So next. No, no, I think no, we've no. given you really more than enough time. Next. Wow. That was really something. Okay. Uh, let's see what the next clown has for us. Honk, honk. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to bring up something that you previously had said in the past, but you also brought up again in this speech. So it is relevant. You had talked about climate cooling. Well, actually, wait, before I do, I wish for your health, your continued health, the health of your husband and children. Thank well, you. It's very stuff. sweet. I just want that that's nice. I'd always try to start with that. Um, you had said to Bill Maher on Club Random about climate cooling, and you again brought that up. Um, and Bill pushed back on that, rightfully so, about how climate cooling was never really used in a large academic sense or a governmental sense. 
So I was just wondering if you would be able to tell me like any level of citation where that climate cooling comes into context outside of the geological formation of volcanoes, which is does cause a climate cooling effect due to the ash coming into the atmosphere causing extreme ex extermination events. So I'm not able to provide you a citation because I'm on stage handing, holding a microphone. What I said to you was that if you speak to people of prior generations, they'll tell you that their scare was different. I think it was the generation of the 70s uh, who were told that the climate was going to cool and that freezing was a risk. Now, I can't tell you what happened in their classrooms. Obviously, I wasn't in there, but I can tell you that I bet if you asked around to some adults, they would tell you that they heard, there's some nodding their head right now about global cooling. So I don't know what else to tell you other than people say that that was their scare in the 1970s. I, I, I wasn't making a defense for cooling or warming. I was just telling you that every time you are in a, a classroom and you're in high school, there's always a different climate scare that they're trying to tell you. And they've now finally landed on in your generation climate change. So I, I'm not you know, debating you on cooling. I can just tell you that. They got it wrong, and then the Earth started warming, and then they got it wrong again because the Earth started cooling, and now they've landed on climate change. So I hope that clarifies what I was talking about, just the generational change. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next clown. Oh, they're okay, convening. Okay. My bad. You said that sex ed effectively sexualized children, and yeah. I was wondering if you had ever heard of the case in Delaware, close to where you're from in Connecticut, where a 10-year-old girl was able to finally tell her mother that she was being sexually abused by her father because she was able to learn sex ed from the It's Perfectly Normal book. Would you like to comment on that, please? Yeah, sure. So one example does not mean that it impacts the majority at large. I would very much like to believe and know that the majority of people are not 10 years old being, you know, sexually molested by their parents. What you're doing right now is pretty much what the government does. They find one extreme example and try to make everybody fearful that this is going on all the time. This is actually how they introduce sex ed. Everybody's just doing it. And that actually wasn't true. It's never in everybody. Can you find a somebody? Sure. What is the goal of government? Is there ever going to be something that's perfect and you create perfect laws? Well, there's always going to be exceptions. You got to create the rule. You can't have the rule based on exceptions. You know, there are exceptional things that happen all the time. You know, if we said that, you know, one person who got their license when they were age 21 got into a wreck on the day that they got their license, well, so nobody's allowed to get their license, that would be crazy. It's crazy. You have to talk about what the majority is. You have to talk about the, the majority percentage of experiences. And it is a fact that within 10 years after introducing sex education, the stats completely flipped and the majority of kids were graduating without their virginity, as opposed to prior to that when it was a, a, dif a very different society. Also, what you could say had an impact was that we used to teach the Bible at school. Like people were basically, you know, Christian. There was a lot more Christianity in the classroom, and that got removed after some lawsuits. I believe that was in the, the mid '60s. It's so sad, you know, on the whole sex ed thing. When I was in public high school as well as middle school, we had sexual education classes, or sex ed as they call it for short. I remember teachers routinely telling myself and all the other students in the classroom, "Well, we all know you guys are going to do it anyways." It being sex. So if you're going to do it, you know, make sure you do it safely. Use contraception, wear condoms, birth control, IUD, blah, 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 blah. And I even remember hearing a teacher tell us that abstinence is the only 100% effective way. Sure, but we know you guys aren't going to do that. So let's not really harp on that. And they didn't harp on that. What they really harped on was all these different forms of birth control. I remember they even were showing us how to put condoms on using a banana. <laughs> Sounds like a joke, but I'm not. I'm not kidding. They actually did that. And if I recall correctly, they even told us that we had to do it as part of a class assignment. So that's the level of degeneracy, frankly, that we have introduced into our school system now and what they're pushing on us. So I love that Candace pointed out that virginity rates of high school students were not in the majority before they introduced this, because aside from it being very tragic that we now have more students choosing to engage in that kind of behavior outside of the bounds of marriage, it's very important that we see that and recognize it for what it is. And all the way to the Supreme Court. But again, we, the goal of a government is to govern for the whole, not the you know, fringe minority of circumstances that happen. It doesn't make them any less sad or any less awful, but you can't then base laws and everything that you're doing on them. Hope that helps. No, I don't care. I don't care. You can only ask questions. Yeah, you guys, you've already asked a question, so we're going to go to the next Bye -bye. one. But thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. 
Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that clown show. Uh, pun fully intended. If you want to see more videos like this, uh, guys, uh, be sure to comment below. Let us know what you liked, what you want to see coming up, and we'll see you guys again soon. Thanks, and God bless.